It's Greg from Scholar Farms. I'm here in Laramie, Wyoming. The wind is blowing. Uh, we're going to get in the car and we're going to drive a couple of hours to look at some pocket gophers. Uh, so I'm going to hang out with some friends from the University of Wyoming. We're going to talk more about gophers and the state of Wyoming. Uh, we're going to fly some drones and check it out. I hope you find it interesting, but we're here from the campus of the University of Wyoming. We're going to go out in the field. Go Cowboys. here in the middle of Wyoming somewhere hours from Laramie trying to look at pocket gophers however it's blowing like 25 miles an hour 40 miles an hour gusts uh, and uh, it's raining and sunny at the same time which is bizarre and we are sitting in the car we're gonna look at some data uh, we got a little bit of drone flights in, but we uh, totally hit the max. Um, we're here with Jake Goheen in the back seat, uh, and we, who is a mammal guy, which is great because he's at the University of Wyoming. Um, but we're also thinking about rare species. And so, um, Britt, tell us a little bit about kind of what you're studying and like why I should care about pocket gophers in the middle of Wyoming. Okay, um, so I am studying the Wyoming pocket gopher, which is a species endemic only to Wyoming, um, meaning that it's only found in this state of Wyoming, um, pretty much between Rollins and Rock Springs in this uh, red desert ecosystem. Yeah, so it's like pretty rare, small distribution, so rare mm -hmm. threatened, threatened species. Yep, and so um, this species has really only been studied a handful of times. We don't know very much about its ecology. Um, we kind of relate everything that we know to a, a sympatric species of pocket gopher, the northern pocket gopher. Okay. Um, and Jake was saying that uh, uh, it's not listed federally because we actually just don't know enough yeah, about its distribution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we really don't know um, very much about it at all. So um, we're kind of out here trying to learn more about its ecology, the habitat that it's in, um, maybe look at survival rates and, and things like that. Yeah, so we're trying to use drone data uh, to, to survey for mounds and try and spot check the mounds or at least identify where the mounds are a little bit quicker uh, due to disturbance in the ground. Uh, maybe we can look at some of the vegetation data as well. However, uh, it, we're pushing the max on our drones today. Uh, we got a little bit of data, we're going to look at it, um, but this is Greg from Scholar Farms. We'll show you a little bit of data in a bit through the screencast. For Boy, it's a color color. time shape thing. Because yeah. there are other things that color, color. on that screen, but yeah. none that are that shape. shape. Yeah. So you could also do and trigger every second and fly to consistent feed and just put it on the intervalometer and just have it take still photos. And these photos are all geo-referenced in that same for and I would be confident at 20 feet flying. It's just that when you're moving along like you just need to know it's 20 feet above takeoff and if you fly and there's 20 feet elevation gain like you can run into the ground mm -hmm. and so that's where hey greg here I, we just got back to california from that trip to wyoming big thanks to jake and his team for bringing me out in the field and talking about wyoming pocket gophers and the reason i wanted to do this video is to think about wildlife biology in general so there's a lot of private and public agencies uh, that are using uh, drones as tools for counting and measuring wildlife. Lots of academics are thinking about research. And so just my two cents on that trip out into the field, I think drones are a powerful tool that could complement what wildlife biologists are already doing out in the field. So let me tell you what I think uh, those opportunities could be, those low hanging fruit. So there's a lot of data layers that biologists are already using for tracking games. So they're looking at movement ecology. So there are lots of radio collars and other kind of uh, tracking devices that are out there. They're using a lot of 
uh, ground-based imagery, so game cameras for monitoring and triggering, particularly at night. So when an animal walks past a camera, then it will trigger and you'll know that the presence of that animal, that specific animal based on its markings or kind of population level densities mark recapture. Also, we're thinking about characterizing habitat, and this is a good way for thinking about combining those data layers is to use a drone to fly and map plant cover or different species composition, um, or even just move the movement of the animals uh, and using the drone to kind of follow that, those particular movements and flight paths to get that aerial kind of top-down view. So lots of opportunities to combine those data layers together to really get a bigger and better picture of wildlife, both their abundance how they move, where they're at, uh, and also thinking about conservation and management decisions based on that. So drones are a powerful tool for that. Combining it with existing data layers, I think the opportunities are there. I'm Greg with Scholar Farms, and we'll talk to you again soon.